Lumos has quite a list of contributors, and it carries with it um, a very strong Sun <laughs> legacy. Um, Garrett Demore obviously used to work at Sun. He wrote the Boomer Sound system. Brian Cantrell, he helped write D-Trace, currently uh, working for Joint. Uh, Bill Moore, he's working for Nexenta. He helped create ZFS. Uh, Dan McDonald, project lead for IPSEC in Solaris, he's now contributing to Lum Lumos. I mean, it's a very long list of, of names, and they're, um, you know, it gives Lumos a credibility that it otherwise might not have had, and that lets people who want to use um, Open Indiana uh, have a certain degree of, of uh, confidence that it's going to be maintained and it's going to get updates and it's going to get bug fixes. Um, it's a bit dark, but uh, this is a picture of um, the Illumos people recently from uh, Scale. Uh, it's Garrett second from the left. I think that's Dan on the furthest left. Who are the consumers of Illumos? Uh, well, Open Indiana, obviously. Uh, Nexenta, Shilix, Belnix, Stormos, Celos, and Giant. Um, Giant are a very large cloud computing provider in the States who are uh, partly funded by Intel and they are using Lumos in their core products to provide cloud computing services. So what has Lumos done since the fork? Well there have been over 151 commits and that's um, peer reviewed commits, <coughs> um, meaning that each one of these commits has been through a review process. Um, they've replaced the closed um, internationalization in the, the C library. That was a big thing that just hung around after Open Solaris was open sourced uh, and didn't seem to go away until Garrett sat down and actually uh, wrote the code. Uh, a lot of closed stuff has been replaced with open equivalents, so Illumos really aims to be completely open source, not just partial open source. Um, it's doing things like yanking Perl out of OSNAP, which doesn't really belong there. It's not something that's really needed. Um, a lot of tools started being written in Python because it was the language du jour, but it, with that came quite a big dependency that um, the Illumos developers felt uh, burdened Illumos. So uh, the boot environment uh, utility BEADM has been rewritten in C, and so have a lot of the ZFS tools. They've also added uh, SCSI unmap support, which means that if you're using um, <coughs> Solaris as a Comstar target, so if you're using <coughs> iSCSI, for example, and Open Indiana or Lumos is your SCSI target, um, if your client um, tells it to free some blocks, it can actually free that space up uh, in the file system, and that's a feature that is not present in Oracle Solaris. And it's worth mentioning, yep. It's just for x86 or Spark as well. Uh, it compiles on both. Um, at the moment, Open Indiana is only available for x86, but um, you can download and install Lumos on Spark. And Open Indiana does intend to, to come out on, on Spark as well. It's not really our focus because, again, Spark is something that Enterprise typically goes for, and Enterprise typically is going to want to pay for support. What does Illumos hold for the future? Um, more open drivers, things like the MPT driver, that powers almost every single LSI RAID card out there. Um, LSI RAID cards just seem to be the standard kind of card that people run uh, these days. Um, open uh, IPSEC um, key exchange utilities. Uh, an, an, a new open NFS lock manager, better ZFS ACL support. Um, ZFS Comstar <coughs> bug fixes and performance improvements. Um, we're working to make uh, Lumos bootable with GCC. Um, Open Solaris actually did a lot of work in that area, and when you compile OSNet, it actually compiles it in two phases. Uh, first of all, with Sun Studio, and then secondly, with GCC. Uh, the GCC stuff would never boot, um, but it was compiled with it, and uh, work's actually being done to make it boot when you compile with GCC. And really, the sky's the limit. There's an awful lot that can be done. And if anyone has feature suggestions or wants to work on stuff, they're welcome to do so. It's, uh, your contributions will be integrated. Um, with Sun, the stewardship was uh, towards... It was a kind of a funnel for the next version of Solaris, Solaris 11. And it allowed Sun to cherry-pick what they wanted for it. With the Lumos, we're gonna be, it's going to be a lot more accepting of community contributions, and there will be... Um, you won't have to find a sponsor, for example. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier for people to contribute to this. <coughs> so 
So uh, I wanted to go over how OI is constructed because I think it's pretty interesting and even if you're using Solaris 10 at work, um, it helps to understand how the operating system is put together. So Open Solaris traditionally was developed by different teams um, working on what uh, some called consolidations and a consolidation is basically a grouping of software. Um, so you've got OSNet which is the kernel and core user land. Um, by kernel and core user land, I'm really talking about uh, things like ifconfig, zfs command. Um, core user land actually extends to tools like tr and sad. Um, you've got the Sun Freeware collection that contains stuff like Apache, PHP, stuff like that. Um, JDS, that's a Java desktop system. It's got Thunderbird, Firefox, GNOME all the kind of desktop -y stuff. And in fact, I think when JDS was started, you could actually compile and run it on Linux. It wasn't just a completely uh, Solaris thing. XMV, which is the X Windows consolidation, it's got its own one, because uh, X is quite big. Um, there's the Userland consolidation. Um, it's worth m mentioning that um, these are, some of these have very long histories. Um, JDS is built with package tool. It spits out SVR4 packages, even still, which have to be converted into IPS packages. Um, SFW still spits out SVR4 packages. Um, XNV and OSNet, they spit out IPS packages, so they're a bit easier to work with. Um, Userland is going to replace uh, SFW, and it's got very tight integration with uh, IPS. Um, and you can actually download Userland and use it on Solaris 10, for example, um, you can rip out the software that's in it and populate it with your own software. And in fact, um, an interesting project I'm working on at work is we've uh, built and compiled IPS, the Open Solaris Package Manager, on Solaris 10, and we're combining that with Userland to um, maintain our own software repository for all the software that we as a business use, um, which we're finding incredibly powerful. You're getting the, the latest kind of features on Solaris 10, which is what we still use at work. And then there are others like uh, Package uh, Consolidation, which is the IPS package management tool. Uh, there's Cayman, which is the installer. There's a whole bunch of them. So in terms of what's available, uh, Oracle closed um, shortly before Solaris 11 Express came out. Um, Solaris 11 Express is uh, build 151A. Um, they closed the source at build 147. Um, the future builds of Open Indiana uh, will use Illumos instead of OSNet. Um, however, everything else is still open, so Oracle is still publishing um, SFW, JDS, etc. And it doesn't make sense for them really to close it because it's already open source software. GNOME's open source, Firefox open source, Thunderbird's open source. Um, it's, it doesn't make sense for them to close it really. So, um, how do Oracle feel about this? Well, Sun opened, uh, opened up Solaris and they fostered a community and they promoted alternative distributions. Things like Nexenta were born out of Sun's uh, effort to open source it. Sun wanted distributions to crop up. Um, and I think Oracle would be naive to think that they could simply undo this just by wishing it to be so. And the fact is Oracle kind of already have done this themselves. Um, their unbreakable Linux is just, they've just taken the source code of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, tweaked it a bit and re-released it, um, standing on the shoulders of, of Red Hat. So in a way, what we're doing with Solaris, Oracle have already done themselves. So, you know, it's, it's the open source way. When the source is out there, uh, people are free to do this. And the alternative, if we didn't do this, then a lot of people will be forced to switch to Linux and FreeBSD. And I don't think uh, Oracle would really want that. I think Oracle, it's in their interest for people to still be using uh, things like um, Illumos and Open Indiana in the wild. Uh, even if it's not contributing directly to their bottom line, it's going to be contributing to, to the awareness of Solaris, and that's going to drive their enterprise sales. Just thinking, um, there's no trick in this question. Would it not be possibly easier to migrate the interesting bits of Solaris stuff into BSD? Um, possibly, but I mean, the, the, no one wants a monoculture. And uh, BSD has a very long history and it's got a set of developers and they have their particular